kind of just compare him to, you know, a Gabe Davis because just because we lost Davis and, you know, we lost Davis size and some of his blocking ability, some of his physicality. And for people that are like super concerned about that, if we can recapture anything of what Claypool was, um, I think you, I think you have that guy and he's competing for your wide receiver six spot right now. Um, so Gabe Davis is six two, two hundred 216 pounds. Um, and speed wise ran a four, five, four at, at the combine, uh, Chase Claypool, six four two thirty, and ran even faster 40 at, uh, four, four, two, um, his three years with Pittsburgh in 2020 played in 16 games, uh, had 62 catches on 109 targets, 873 yards, nine touchdowns. And he also added, um, 10 carries for 16 yards and two touchdowns. And then 2021, played in 15 games, 59 catches on 105 targets, 860 yards, two touchdowns, and 14 carries for 96 yards. And 2022, uh, played in eight games for them, 46 catches on 79 targets, 451 yards, one touchdown, uh, nine carries for 59 yards. Um, All that to say... Like I said, kind of tempering expectations here. Obviously, had two seasons after that that were season and a half after that that were just absolutely disastrous. Um, I'm I'm not going to get myself too excited here. I I look at this as a reclamation project. It's kind of like the idea of you know come to Buffalo and be the best version of yourself. But I liked looking at what he was able to do in Pittsburgh because I I think I think Pittsburgh and Buffalo are kind of similar similar teams in the way they like to run their organization and it's kind of like that you know like the blue collar city that you know the team often reflects you know like the people of the city just kind of like that gritty hard working you know no nonsense in the building type deal. And I think, you know, Tomlin and McDermott kind of run a similar ship, you know, with that in mind. Um, So am I banking on Claypool coming in and, you know, knocking everybody's socks off and he ends up being, you know, like our wide receiver two or three or something like that? Uh, I I don't expect that, no. Uh, But I think there's a world where he you know, could have his act together, you know, stay on the right track and everything and could be really productive as like a wide receiver four or five, something like that. And so part of the reason I wanted to make some of these Gabe Davis comparisons to him um, is looking at it through the lens of like how awesome Gabe Davis was and how much we loved him when he was like the wide receiver four and you know you had to plan for the guys ahead of him and you know he was getting the matchups he was getting you know lost running downfield things like that and I think with some of the speed dynamics of having you know two four three guys um Shakir being a fast and twitchy guy and the idea of Claypool kind of being an afterthought, I do think he could end up making some actual noise. Um, I, I've been doing this really tough balancing act with, with myself of like knowing, knowing what I think of Claypool as a player right now. And, you know, if you listen to previous episodes, you know, it being a low risk, high reward signing that I wouldn't have done. Um, and then having that match up with you know, looking at his his previous statistical years and like, damn that like that's that's a guy that was, you know, sniffing at thousand yard seasons twice in his career. 